So um, your true hu identity as a human being is already known. So it's such a relief right there. Because your true identity as a human being is instinctive and it's innate and you're born with it. And, and it's just present for us to recognize it at any time. So that game of trying to create an identity is just an illusion, just something we learned. And now we really are empowered to see that that was never ever necessary, we just did it. So there is really something about us that is not disturbed or influenced at all by what we think and feel. There's really something about us not disturbed at all. Not disturbed by our physical sensations, our pains, aches, nothing. And in the Balanced View training, we simply call that natural state as a human being, that natural identity, as open intelligence. But it's nameless, it's an experience. So we could call it awareness, clarity, open intelligence. But what I have seen in my own life is that there is, it is a wisdom, like a true, pure wisdom about how to just be Nina in my most original, purest form. So, so open intelligence, it's really an opening wisdom that has no beginning and ends. You just know instinctively how you would like to show up in this moment that is of most benefit. You don't need to think about it. You don't even need to learn about it. You only need to instinctively recognize it for yourself. And that is what this training and this education we provide here called the Four Mainstays completely points you to. Your instinctive recognition of this about you that is not disturbed by anything. An instinctive education, that's radical, and that's something we should have been given at kindergarten. You know, it's such a fundamental education in life, a life education. And if you wonder, well, what is open intelligence? Who am I as open intelligence? You are open intelligence already. So if you stop thinking, you know that you're still here, present, alert, clear. You can try that right now. You're not dependent on your thought. You can simply stop thinking, no thoughts, and you're completely available. And then when we think many thoughts at the same time, we know that there is something about us that is present in, of, as, and through all thoughts, through all emotions, through all data. In this training, we, we make it so simple. All the thoughts, emotions, all the things, places, relationships, persons, anything that you can perceive in this moment. It's just data, it's just information, no big deal. But the education we have received so far in life made a big deal out of that. That where, is where I got lost. And I'm sure many with me got lost in that. Describing all this information, describing all this data, describing and analyzing and trying to understand. Thinking you had to do that to survive in the world, to be able to relate, to be able to do anything. You had to do that. Now we are here to test that actually it's not true. We are here to test that there is something instinctive about this that is so powerful so beyond all learned habits about life, all of the learned reactions, all of it. It can only be instinctively recognized. And in this training, we give you only one instruction to do that. Only one instruction. And you are so blessed to be here and hear that and go and test this for the rest of your day. For a short moment, you tap into open intelligence repeatedly until it becomes continuous. So it means for short moments throughout your day, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, no conditions needed, no special circumstances needed, check it for yourself. See if it's true for you. Because you can come and listen to others speak about it. 
about nature of reality is worth nothing if you don't recognize it in your own life. It's worth nothing. I had so many books about this, nature of reality, read it. It was fun to read it. I could go and read it now and it's fun, but it doesn't matter in the case of me recognizing who I am as a human being. It has to be recognized midst daily life. So I have seen in my life that there isn't any separation between outside world and inside world. If all is one, all is one. All ideas about selflessness or self-focusedness, where is that? It's ideas. You know your world through your own experience. There is nowhere else to know who you are. It's nowhere else to know who anyone else are. It's through getting yourself so clear. By short moments you clear up all your experience. You see yourself naked clearly while being angry. Not afterwards, while being angry. You see yourself naked clearly while being so sad and crying. You see yourself naked and clearly while being so happy and enthusiastic. See who you are then. Then you get to know everyone feeling that same emotion, thinking that same thought right now. How could we ever think we could help anyone without knowing this deeply in ourselves? This isn't any mystery. And I have been working for many, many years in Africa, all over the world, trying to really make a change in the world. So I'm happy to sit here today in this chair to say that that's worth nothing if I cannot demonstrate peace myself. If I cannot demonstrate that there is something about me that is not disturbed by what I'm thinking and feeling, that is not disturbed while I feel so stressed because I have so many things to do, that does not feel dis disturbed when my boss is shouting at me and being angry for me not doing the things good enough. If I'm still reacting on that, I use my beautiful life force and energy in my reaction and not being of benefit to other people around me. So if I would do one thing differently today, it would be to go back to Africa, do the same job again and take short moments while doing my things. While distributing food to people dying, while being in refugee camps, taking short moments knowing myself. Because in that there is a pure transmission of what is possible as a human being. It's the only way to make peace. Otherwise we're just doing the same thing all over again. We're just showing each other how it is to be a victim of our thoughts and emotions and other data. Is that what we want to show other people? That is the question I've asked myself so many times. Is that what I want to show other people? Is this what I want to show the world? No. So it has to start with myself. So the self-love and the self-care, the self-dignity, the self-respect is far beyond the, the labels we have about what is self-love. Before I thought it was, oh, I need to be kind to myself today. Uh, maybe I buy a present to myself or, oh, I should not say any, any bad things to myself today. No, 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 no. I mean, and then, of course, all bad things came. <laughs> you know, it's just so contrived. It's just a label of what self-love is. Self-love is an experience as open intelligence. It's your instinctive birthright of being completely free, open, clear in all experience. Not in special experiences. So we use our life as our laboratory. And that's what happens in this training, that the more you expose yourself to the education and the four mainstays, the more you really see that your data are allowed to free, be free-flowing, to be set free. The data are not there to limit you. The data are there to inform you that you are perfect as you are. The data are there to empower you to be of most benefit in that situation. The data is there only to give you that information. What is of most benefit in this situation? 
to everyone including yourself? It's an instinctive question, the answer is instinctive, the answer is completely responsive to each time, place and circumstance. No more rule books about how to be a human being. Back to basic, back to trusting the instinctive knowing about how, how it is to be a human being. That is true freedom. That's the freedom we all long for. And now we have an education where we can really train it up. And what I have come to see in my own life is that before I was so focused on describing my thoughts and emotions and my other data. So I saw them so vividly because I focused on it. You know, this isn't any mystery. If something you focus on, it just gets more. So I focus on this and focus on this. There was no chance to tap into that there was something stable about me. No, it was all, all something instable. Because all the thoughts and emotions, they're always changing anyway. So I was there up and down, here and there, and ooh. So exhausting. Now I really know how exhausting it was. I, I, I wasn't even aware of exhausting it was now when I stepped back from it. Like, ugh, how could I do that to myself? How could I do that to others? So there you see that it's just as the metaphor of the stars at night. At night you see the stars so clearly. This was me when I was focusing on data. It was so all over the place. Now, in short moments of open intelligence, it's a gradual old shining of all my data. It means that my recognition of myself as open intelligence is stronger and stronger, brighter and brighter, so now I don't see all this data anymore. It's there, I know they are there informing me, but I don't need to go in there and micromanage and check and describe, and I, I know it's there. I know I still have feelings. <laughs> I know I still have thoughts. I don't need to confirm that. It's been confirmed to me for 40 years. I know I have full, of, full on, all the time. Physical, mental, emotional data, all the time. No more need to check that out. Now I'm checking out myself as open intelligence. So therefore, it is like the stars are still there now today. We don't see it because sun is bright. So it's basically the focus of open intelligence come in the front and the focus of the data just go back, 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 back. <laughs> you know? And as Candy say, we are the lucky group that have the minds before and after. So all my life experience is gold. Because I know how it is to be completely trapped in descriptions of data. I'm so happy I know that. I will never forget that. You know, because then that's my pure connection with everyone. That's how I can save the world, because I know through my own experience how it is to be a human being. We got to face it. Face everything and avoid nothing that is the greatest power. Your greatest power and the greatest power of humanity. And it's so fun to see yourself when you are not afraid, or even fearlessness is there, even if you are full of fears. You know, but it's, it's a discovery. Every day I feel more empowered to see myself nakedly. Every day, more. More willing, more open, more fun. More scary, but still more stable. Because I've seen that all ideas about thinking all this data will drive me mad. Now it will completely, it's too much. It never happened. Each short moment, blazingly obvious, unclear, stable, and I see that all my data is inseparable from open intelligence. All my data is just as the wind in the air. Dynamic energy of myself expressing myself freely when I allow myself to do so. Just <coughs> as the air is allowing the wind to express itself naturally. We can do that to ourselves right now in a short moment. We can do this right now in a short moment. And we use the four mainstays as a support. We all have a trainer, we have all the training media, we have an amazing community. We decide to use time, energy, money, 
we are practical about it, we see it as an education, and the education gives you that instincting remembrance to take the short moments in action while you're living your daily life. I would never have been able to remember it if I didn't educate myself. No way! I was so trained in data focusing. Many years of data focusing, education of that. Now I decided to go on another education on my instinctive recognition of who I am as a, as a human being. So it's only from there everything will change. And we don't even know how legal frameworks, how, how governments, how any structures in the world today will change. We don't even know, need to know. Because we are the people to empower the world of what is really of most benefit. So that question, wherever we go and we exemplify that, we implement that, we ask that question, we stand up for that, the world is changed forever in that. And I'm not a person that would say these words lightly, you know, I've seen all the suffering out there. I could be so negative and cynical and lose all hope if I want in this moment to focus on that. But I know it's possible. Right here, right now, it's possible. 